How did it take 35 years for anyone to find out William Boken was dead? It's a question we've been asked often since news broke last week of the discovery of human remains believed to be Luis Petrevitz buried beneath Mr. Boken's former basement. Ms. Petrevitz had been missing since October 1966. At the center of the discovery is the death certificate of Mr. Boken, Luis's boyfriend at the time of her disappearance. A married man and a former South Old Town police officer, Mr. Boken's death certificate was used by investigators to get more information out of his former wife, Judy Terry. Specifically, upon learning of Mr. Boken's death and seeing his death certificate for the first time, Ms. Terry revealed to police that she saw Mr. Boken bury a body in the basement of the home they once shared on Lower Road in Southold. The information she gave led police to the remains March 19th. Although she has been positively identified as the, uh, as the deceased, um, indications are that this was a missing person case and that we believe that that's who, who, uh, who, who we found. Since the discovery, many people have asked how it's possible that no one knew Mr. Boken had died in 1982, including his former wife, who was the mother of his two children. So we put together this video to better explain how Mr. Boken's death was discovered. When we began reporting on the case last June, it was assumed Boken might still be alive. That assumption was based on a 2013 summary report from the South Hill Police Department that listed a last known address for Mr. Boken in New York City. As we began to learn more about his likely involvement in the case, we started to dig more into his background. Who is he? Where is he? Lacking any contact information from Mr. Boken, short of the last known address, we searched for ways to reach family members. While doing so, we learned of the death of one of his siblings on the website findagrave.com. On a whim, we searched the same website for the name William Boken and found two entries, both born in 1930. One of the deceased died in August 1982 in New York City. Seemed like it could be our guy. He was buried at Hart Island. That entry did not feature a date of birth at the time, though. New York City's only potter's field, public records for Hart Island are scarce. Records are most accessible through an online database maintained by the Hart Island Project. The Hart Island Project listing for William Boken revealed that he died on August 20th, 1982, at the age of 52. In an effort to learn more about this Mr. Boken, we next tried the New York City Department of Corrections, which maintains records for the island. Its website also features an online database. While that database still did not give us a date of birth, it listed Mr. Boken's place of death as 9735 75th Street in Queens. So we decided to check out that address. That's it right there. The kids are hanging out the door. We were told by the current homeowners that they had never heard of a William Boken. So we headed to Manhattan and a different address local police had on file. A longtime resident there said he had never heard of a William Boken either. The super, who's worked there for over 40 years, he said the same. Assuming now that our William Boken was likely the one on Hart Island, we called Melinda Hunt, who runs the Hart Island Project. We were looking for guidance on how we might find a date of birth for someone buried on the island. If you've got that date of death, and they listed the place of death, right? Figure out what, what precinct mm -hmm. that is. You just go to the precinct and with that date of death and that name and get the police report. It's, and if it's not a hospital or a nursing home, then there's going to be a police report. Ms. Hunt was right. There was a police report. But on our first attempt to obtain it under the Freedom of Information Act, we were denied by the NYPD, which said our request would constitute an unwarranted invasion of privacy. So on the advice of the New York State Committee on Open Government, we wrote an appeal, arguing that Mr. Boken is deceased and was estranged from his family, whose privacy was being violated. Three weeks later, police released us the incident report from his death, which confirmed the date of birth and also gave us additional details about the last years of his life. He drove a cab and lived in isolation, never bringing guests to the apartment he was renting. When he died, police were led to believe he had roots in Albany, so no one ever reached out to his family on Long Island to notify them of his death. We used town and county records to further piece together how little contact he had with family members in the final 14 years of his life. Zoning board records for South Hold, the home he shared with Miss Terry, the same property where the remains were found last week, led us to the county center in Riverside where after hours of pouring through bound volumes, we found a handwritten record of a real estate dispute between Miss Terry and Mr. Boken. The file for that case showed that attorneys at that time, in 1978, had difficulty locating Mr. Boken to pay him when the house was sold. The file also contained the couple's divorce papers, which stated they hadn't seen each other since 1967. Moving to surrogate's court, we found the will for Mr. Boken's father, which suggested the most recent contact any of his siblings had with him was from a sister who spoke with him early in 1982. In all of these court matters, Mr. Boken, 
his siblings, and attorneys stated that he would not disclose his address to receive payments of a combined $25,000. One attorney said in 1981 that all efforts to serve William Boken in order to settle his father's estate had been futile. There were several letters like this. Eighteen months later, Mr. Boken was found dead. His family wouldn't find out for another 35 years. Police also used the Suffolk Times reporting to obtain Mr. Boken's death certificate from officials in New York City. That death certificate, it now appears, will end up providing the answer to a question that has been asked for 51 years. What happened to Louise Petrevitz?